Hello and welcome to this video on using the new Band in a Box for Windows DAW plugin, specifically using it in FL Studio. With Band in a Box 2018 for Windows, we've introduced a plugin version of Band in a Box that accesses all of the real tracks, real drums, and other content in Band in a Box, but can be used right inside your favorite DAW without having to open the actual Band in a Box application. The plugin comes free with the purchase of Band in a Box, and the plugin installs when you install the main program. In this video, we're going to have a look at the various ways you can use this amazing plugin in FL Studio. If you use a different DAW, we have other videos that demonstrate it in many other DAWs, such as Reaper, Pro Tools, Cakewalk, Cubase, Studio One, and many more. In this video, we'll first look at a quick and easy way to get started using the plugin. We'll also go through some of the technical aspects, such as the installation, locations of the plugin on your computer, and some settings within the plugin. Then we'll look at different ways you can use the plugin, including adding Band in a Box tracks to an existing project you're working on. And throughout the video, I'm going to try and use a variety of different Band in a Box styles, so you'll get a sense of some of the different genres, grooves, and tempos we cover. Whether you're into jazz, rock, country, R&B, or any styles you can think of, there's something for you in Band in a Box. So what we're listening to right now are some great funk tracks playing in FL Studio that we created with the plugin. Most of what you're hearing right now was created by the Band in a Box plugin simply by typing in these chords, and you can enter any chords in any key. Then we picked this funk style and generated the tracks. We then added a few additional electronic sounds right in FL Studio to round out the project. I'm going to go back in time a little bit to show you just how we got these great sounding tracks. So here we are with a blank FL Studio project. This is the playlist or tracks area. Here is the mixer window. And here is the channel rack. And this is the browser area. And since this is a plugin, we want to click on the plug icon. The first time you're using the Band in a Box plugin, you might want to refresh plugin list first, just to make sure the BB plugin is recognized. But after that, it should be in Installed Generators VST3. And you can drag that to the channels rack. So this is the Band in a Box plugin. It's sizable, so I'll make it bigger. And now we have a blank chord chart. This area here is for the different instruments in the style and is currently blank because we don't have a style loaded yet. Here is where you can pick a style. Here you can set various musical elements such as the key, time signature, etc. And there's a spot for a song title and various menus we'll look at later. What we basically need to do in order to get some tracks is pick a style and enter some chords, not necessarily in that order. So I'll enter a chord progression first. I'll do it in the key of F and I'll start entering some chords. F7 at bar one and I'll leave that for four bars maybe A flat seven sus at bar five, and B flat seven at bar seven. One thing I want to point out is that you use the left and right arrows to navigate your way through the chord chart, but left and right arrows are also used in the plugin window of FL Studio to toggle through additional plugin settings within FL Studio. So depending on where you clicked last, you might find it toggling through these windows when you're intending to toggle through the chord chart. If that happens, just keep pressing the arrow keys until you're back here, and then make sure you click on the chord chart again and it should be fine. I'll use a handy shortcut, K8, to copy the last eight bars. I'll also add a part marker at bar nine to outline the form of the song. And that means that the drums will play a fill in the bar right before the part marker. At bar 17, I'll add a part marker as well, but I'll click a second time to make it a B part marker, which means the drums and sometimes other instruments will change what they're playing at that part. And I'll enter G minor, then C minor at bar 19, G minor at bar 21 again, and then C7 at bar 23. So I think that's good. I'll change some of the elements up here. I'll make the end bar 24, but I'll actually end on an F chord. And I'll change choruses to six, so this entire thing will repeat six times. So now we can select a style, either by clicking in the select a style area, or by going to the select menu and picking select a style. So here is a list of all of the Band in a Box styles available, and you can see there's over 6,000 to choose from. And in this list, you can just double click on any style in the list to hear a sample of what it will sound like. So for example, if I filtered the list to show jazz styles, I could sample some of them.
or some rock styles. or some country styles. But I think the progression I entered would be very well suited to some funk styles. So I'll filter by that. I'll sample a variety of some funk styles. And I love this lash out style. You'll notice that in this column it shows the ideal tempo of the style which for this one is 110 beats per minute. That does not mean you have to use it at that tempo, but if it's somewhat close to that, you'll get the best results. So I'll pick that style. So now there's a tap tempo feature in FL Studio that I'll use. One, two, three, four. So it's come up with 117 beats per minute, and I'll set that in the plugin as well. So now we're ready to generate the parts. And there are some custom generation options in this menu, but right now I just want all the tracks generated normally, so I'll press the top generate button. So it's now creating the tracks. You'll notice that right now there are some green squares and a blue square in this area, and those squares are empty. When the tracks are ready, those squares will be filled in. The generation does take a little bit of time, so we'll skip ahead in the video a little bit. So now it's finished, and these squares are now filled in with waveform icons, meaning they're ready to drag into the DAW. Before we do that, we can sample these tracks by pressing play up here. And we can now drag them into the DAW, either individually, but I'll undo that so I can show you importing them as a group by dragging the blue icon. And now we have these tracks right in our DAW. And during playback, the chord chart also highlights the currently playing bar, in itself a great tool if you want to record your own tracks now over top of this, or if you just want to play along. Now you'll notice that if I look in the mixer, these tracks aren't here. That's because they're not assigned. Because FL Studio is used so frequently for patterns, and it's often important to be able to mix different elements within a pattern differently, the tracks in the playlist don't necessarily correspond to the inserts in the mixer. But if I right-click on these tracks, I can assign them to the inserts in the mixer. And the inserts you assign them to do not need to match up to the track numbers either. By default, a blank FL Studio project has kick, clap, hat, and snare assigned to inserts 1 through 4, so I'll assign these new Banana Box tracks to inserts 5 and up. And I'll also name them based on the audio file names. You can now mix the tracks, of course, add effects, or anything we like. And as with all real tracks and real drums, these are real instruments played by real musicians. These are not individually sampled notes. These are actual performances by some of the top studio musicians in the world, able to play over any chord progression in any key you enter. This particular style has a bass part by Alex Al, one of the most sought-after bass players in LA, who played in Michael Jackson's band for over 10 years, and has also played with the likes of Stevie Wonder, Sting, and many more. And on guitar is Bob Lanzetti, baritone guitar Mark Lettieri, 
and drummer Spud Searight, all of whom are a major part of the New York funk and fusion scene. Now we can also start to add to this using some of the great resources within FL Studio. For example, the drums here are fantastic, but let's beef them up with some extra modern electronic kick and clap sounds. I'll click here to create a new pattern, and I'll call it Kick and Clap. As I mentioned earlier, there are four default tracks in the channel rack, Kick, Clap, Hat, and Snare. More can be added, but I'll use those in this pattern. Now I'll enter some notes in the channel rack, which is basically a 16-step sequencer. I'll keep this simple, putting a kick on beat 1 and claps on beats 2 and 4. Now I'll switch from song to pattern beside the play button, so I can listen to this pattern. I'd like to try some different sounds for these, so I'll stop that and go to the browser, I'll go to Packs, Drums, Kicks, and I'll click on them to sample them. And I like this Minimal Kick 40. So I'll drag that onto the kick here. And I'll do the same with claps, going to percussion. And I like this DNC clap one. And now I can drag that pattern in and duplicate it through the track. And here's how it now sounds with that. And now I'd like to add a simple synth line to this. I'll add a new pattern like before, and I'll call it Synth. I'll add an actual synth to use by going to the plugin database, and I'll pick a classic synth, and I'll try out this Poison oscillating synth. Now I'll select the blank pattern I created and press the piano roll button, and I'll enter an F note for four bars, which will be playing over the F7 chord. And then I'll go to an E flat, which will be playing over the A flat 7 sus chord. And then a D, which will be playing over the B flat 7 chord. I'll drag that pattern into a blank track. And I'll give it a listen. So it's kind of neat, but it's a little overpowering. But if I kind of go in and out with the low frequency oscillation or LFO value, I can bring it in and out and make it a bit more subtle. So if I right click on that particular controller within the plugin, I can create automation clip, which adds this controller to the timeline. I can right click to add points to that, which I can then move up and down. So I can have it swell at every other bar, making it a lot more subtle. And let's check that out.
So you can see, using the Band in a Box plugin as a starting point, you can get a great foundation where you can then start adding other great material with the amazing tools in FL Studio. You can also, of course, start with the tools in FL Studio and then use the Band in a Box plugin to add to that. We'll have a look at an example that uses this approach a little later in the video, and we'll also go over the installation and setup of the plugin. But right now I'm going to show you some similar but quicker examples like this, with a few different styles, just so you can get a sense of the scope of what you can do with the Band in a Box plugin.